Just another brother with another humble question. Just another brother with another humble question. Uh. Welcome to another episode of A Brother With Questions. I am your host, B. Period. Man, I appreciate you for joining me. Uh, before we get started, let me uh, not forget to ask you to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification button too so you know when these videos are dropping. Uh, and make sure you share and comment. Tell me what you're thinking about these videos. I appreciate you, man. Man, I, I just, I've been debating on whether or not to to comment on this because I don't watch the WNBA and honestly I don't have any desire to watch the WNBA but but every time I turn on my feed my YouTube feed I'm hearing conversations about not even so much the WNBA more so Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and so over the last couple of days I've just been watching a lot of content related to um Caitlin Clark and, and and ultimately Angel Reese uh, the other day, what really sparked another round of conversation was the hard file. Um, a lot of people say it was a flagrant file that, um, oh my gosh, what's the young lady's name? Kennedy Carter uh, placed on Caitlin Clark um, as she was trying to inbound the, um, inbound the, the ball. And so they, she gave a hard, hard hit hip hit she fell to the ground um and that sparked another round of this conversation and what's been frustrating for me about the conversation is two things uh number one you're hearing a lot of conversation about men who you've never heard talk about the WNBA never heard uh I do like Whitlock I watch a lot of Whitlock and until Caitlin Clark Whitlock didn't talk about the WNBA uh, my man, Officer Tatum, he's talking about the WNBA. Uh, we've got just a lot of men just commenting on the WNBA. And, and what I find interesting about all of these conversations is they're all rooted in the black women are hating on the white woman. And I don't know, I just feel like there, this, this conversation is so much more nuanced than just the black women are hating on the white woman, that for them to boil this conversation down to something so simplistic is just disappointing for me when they look at bigger, complex issues on other things and, and, and are a little bit more broad in their perspective. And so uh, as I was, you know, doing a little bit more research, I finally came across a common sense video about this conversation because. I do think, number one, if you're not acknowledging a part of Caitlin Clark's success is related to the fact that she's a white woman who's doing this, then you're not being honest about the conversation. Because while she may be the greatest scorer in women's basketball history, she's not the biggest champion. And, not, and she's not even the biggest champion by any measure. There's other women who've won three championships in a row in college. Uh, they've been the best player on their team. They've, they've gone into the WNBA and been the best player in the WNBA. Uh, Candace Parker is an example of that. I mean, the woman came, won three, I believe she won three championships in college. Uh, three in a row, if I'm not mistaken. And then she went to the WNBA and then was the rookie of the year and the MVP of the year in her rookie year. I mean, MVP of the league in her rookie year. So when we're talking about accomplishments, Caitlin Clark hasn't done this. Yes, she scored better than all of them. But she hasn't, she doesn't have the accomplishments. And so when I think about the, the, uh, the attention that she's got, yes, a part of it is because she's doing it from a scoring perspective and people notice scores. It's, you know, she's always getting the Steph Curry comparison, right? So I get it. You know, if you're putting up 30 points from the three-point line, people are going to pay attention. So I get that part of it. 
but it's you you know anybody you can't you got to acknowledge though that the fact that she's white helps because it's like wow there's one of us and there's a lot of people that relate to that and and rightfully so i'm not even knocking it i'm not mad i'm not hating but i I think you're a fool if you won't acknowledge the truth we live in a country when still the majority of the country is still white uh it is declining but that's still the majority of the country and in a in a sport dominated by black females it's not often that they get a white female and there's other been white other females but they've been foreign so that's a little bit different but we got an american born white female who was dominating um at least from a scoring perspective in the in in uh, women's basketball so i get it i'm not even mad at it because if, if it's not like it comes around all the time so you, you're gravitating to that special thing because that special thing is here and we've been seeing it you know as we you know countless conversations right about it in the league as well of course right she was the hottest thing in the college even though she didn't win no championships it's okay and now she's the hottest thing in the WNBA. And and I, and I get it, but I just think this, this conversation has been so overblown, in my opinion, that it's so simplistic. The black women are hating on the white girl. Like, as, as, as educated as we are, and some of these same people will deny, not deny, that that will acknowledge that race doesn't play a huge part in your success in this country. And I'm on that train. I don't believe race plays a part in your success in this country in 2024. I think how hard you work, regardless of race, big things can be accomplished. But that's, that's where they delve the conversation. And then I ran across all the smoke. And I said, finally, a rational conversation about what's going on in the WNBA. Let's take a look. The way I think people who appreciate the game do. This Caitlin Clark and, and, and Angel Reese thing kind of reminds me and, and go with me a little bit of the Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, a uh, black star, a white star. If you remember, the, you know, they say Magic and Bird saved basketball. That mm-hmm. was the 34th year of the NBA. Um, you know, with all the greatness that's happened in the prior 27 years in the WNBA, you know, some people are saying Caitlin Clark and, and, and Reese are kind of a, a new iteration of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the 28th year for the WNBA. And again, although they've had a lot of greatness to come before these ladies, these ladies are bringing the eyeballs and the attention that are going to make this game go to the next level. Well, you're in the nose with the Larry Bird Magic comparison. <clears throat> I think um, they, they're dealing with a lot of stuff that Magic and Larry deal with like people made Larry and Magic seem like it was racial between them, but it wasn't Ma- Larry and Magic. No, they love. Cool. So now this is a take. I've heard this take. Several people have been doing this take, um, and and and, and I and I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe I recall Angel Reese saying that her and Caitlin Clark um, played each other in high school. So these young ladies have known each other for quite some time. You figure. If they'd known each other in high school, you know, let's say maybe, let's, I don't know if it was junior or senior year, but if let's say it was senior year. They've obviously known each other through college, and that's been four or five years. So they've been knowing each other over five years at this point. And so I, I'd imagine there's probably less animosity between them individually than there is from the perspective of media each other Absolutely. but everybody on the outside with their own they opinions, pick a side. you know what i'm saying they had to yeah. pick a side and they yeah. made it racial and i think both of the both of these young ladies are dealing with the same thing uh it's, it's always been great basketball but it was never basketball on the eyes on basketball like it was in college for these two young yeah. ladies and it transferring to the WNBA. Yeah. so both of these young ladies have everything to do with it being the light being on basketball right now, but I will and say it was a talented rookie class overall. But those two are the, the two main two, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Right, right, and, right. And, and like this, is why I love that it's a lot of women basketball players who are speaking and, and having the same way we feel about it. Because when LeBron came in the league, I love LeBron. He's one of the top three all time players, one of my favorite players ever. Mm-hmm. But what he tried to dunk on me when he was a rookie, and I slammed him to the ground. Are you supposed to? 
<laughs> now, and that's that's another thing I wanted to. I loved how he what he just said because a part of the conversation that they're saying of, as it relates to Caitlin Clark is that she's getting unfairly attacked by the women in the WNBA. So they're purposely out to get her. And and when I watch basketball and, and I don't I don't see I don't watch the WNBA, so I'm not I can't even really speak on the WNBA. I'm just here to tell you. But what I do see when I see basketball is when when the when the new guy comes into the league, the old guys let him know, hey, we ain't in college no more, bruh. And so it doesn't surprise me that in women's professional sports, the old guys let the young guys know, hey, this ain't college no more. And so it's more physical. Uh, there's some vets that are going to be a little rough just to let you know, hey, you're going to have to do some stuff that was different in college if you're going to be successful here. So I love that illustration that they call him Jack, but of course we know his name uh, is Steven. Um, said about LeBron, LeBron was that, LeBron was Caitlin Clark the equivalent in the sense that he came in not even from college he came in from high school being being what they say was going to be the man in the nba and so i can imagine the brothers in the nba like wait a minute y'all finna tell us we've been here y'all finna put this little high school kid and say he about to be better than all of us that's been here and so I love that illustration that Jack said, hey, when that dude came in the league, he tried to dunk on me, I slammed him. <laughs> like, wait a minute, little boy. <laughs> so when I see the rough housing, if you will, and these hard files in the WNBA, I'm thinking if these were men, would anybody be saying anything? Would anybody say, oh, they hating? Would anybody be saying, oh, they're, they're treating him wrong? Or would they just be like, that's a part of the game? So if if they say that, if that's how we treat men, why can't we treat women the same way? Because it's not like there's a man out there doing this to her. There's other women. There's other women going, when you come in the league, it's going to be different. No different than what a vet says, an NBA veteran says about young guys coming into the league. When you come in the league, it's going to be different. I mean, we've heard so many stories from great NBA players talking about just the difference between preseason and the uh, regular season. I, I can't remember the player, but they were they were playing Michael Jordan. I want to say it was AI. And he told the story about how in preseason he balled on Jordan and Jordan let him know, okay, I got you. And they got to the regular season and Jordan killed him. There's something to that nature. But it, but again, it's that it's that little boy. You you in the big leagues now? I don't know. Let's keep going. So yeah, I hard down slammed, and we have the footage, bro. I hard down slammed him. Yeah. But that's just a part of the game. I wasn't trying to hurt him. Nah. It was just you're not finna embarrass me, and you coming into the league. You know, it's a part of the game. Right. I don't think people are doing it to to actually hurt her or being a personal. If you've never been in the game, you wouldn't understand. That's why I I like the way that a lot of the female athletes are speaking up saying that, no, this happens in the game too. Yeah. You know, uh, I played this game. We're going to treat Caitlyn just like everybody else. Am, mm -hmm. I, am I saying yeah. she's, she didn't do what she's doing for the game? No, but if she is a regular player just like everybody else when we play the game. And I respect that. So, but. And that's another thing. Because the women, a lot of the women who are commenting on the WNBA are saying just that. And right, and most of the women commenting are former WNBA players or former college basketball players themselves. And they're saying exactly what Steven's saying. They're saying, hey, this is a part of the game. And then men are coming along and saying, no, it ain't. Y'all just jealous. Like, if there was an, any time to let women speak for women, this is probably the time. 
this is probably the time where women should be speaking for women. Because let's be honest, until Caitlin Clark, men, men weren't watching the WNBA. I'm a man. I'm still not watching the WNBA. But you know what I'm not doing is telling women who played in the WNBA, who played college basketball, that they're wrong about what's going on in college, in, in the WNBA. So it's just weird, this conversation really being sparked by men. And everybody's telling the women they're wrong. This is all jealousy and hate. You have to deal with the good and bad both ways. Yeah. I think um, with, with, with any sports you deal with, people going to praise you. As soon as you get, they get a chance to kick you, they're going to kick They'll you. kick the shit so, out of you. You know what I'm saying? J just the fact that the eyes are on it, I thank both yeah. of these women. Because I've been watching. I come from Texas. You know, I watched, I watched the comments win multiple championships. But I love the fact from what Caitlin and, yeah. and what Angel done for the game. I love it. And again, I, I think they're the vehicle that are going to make people look at, up who, you know, Diana Taurasi, you know, yep. one of the GOATs, Stewie, and, and the list goes on how talented these women are. Asia, we'll, talk, we'll speak about Asia uh, a little bit later, mm -hmm. but they've been the vehicle. But, Jack, I think that brings me to, to, to my – I made a comment the other day or I made a little video the other day when uh, – uh, Caitlin got pushed down mm -hmm. by Sydney Carter, mm -hmm. and it wasn't so much that she got pushed. You don't want to see cheap shots. Sometimes yeah. it happens in the physicality. We all got hit with them. She's going to get beat up, and they're supposed to beat her up. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, we were talking about before, like I remember the first time we played KD in the preseason when he was with Seattle. We were with the uh, the We Believe team, Warriors. We was trying to dog his ass. Mm -hmm. Trying to dog him. At a, he was a young boy. You know what I mean? Like we tried to physically beat him up. But that's what you do to to, to people it's who are supposed to be next in line. They're supposed to be great. So again, my whole thing wasn't with her getting elbowed or harsh. And and, and I imagine there's people that are going to listen to this interview. But again, two former NBA players and go, ah, they're wrong. So if I can't listen to a conversation of, from former players and take them at their word. Why is it that I should be able to, why would I take the word of men who've never played the sport and take their word as true? Doesn't make sense to me. And, and everything people have been saying about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese is, is all true too. The people are coming to see Caitlin Clark. It's true. They say her their her average game this season, I believe, is in uh, upwards of thirteen, fourteen thousand, maybe even fifteen thousand people. Where the average game, I believe, prior to to this was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of eight, nine thousand. So she she's killing that, right? There are a lot more eyes on on the on the season this year. That's all true. Obviously, she got the $28 million contract they saved from Nike. All true. And Angel Reese is not doing bad herself. When she was in college, they said she had one of the highest NIL deals. Uh, they all make the same in the, in the WNBA. And I don't know what her outside deals are, but I, I imagine she's probably making 5 or $10 million or so herself. So they're all bringing eyes and ears to the game. To me, what's, what's so sad about this conversation is, yes, Caitlin is drawing, but Caitlin is not even the best player right now. The best, one of the best players in the league is the same lady who won MVP last year, Asia Wilson. She's still killing the game. And we had these whole conversations about the, the, the eyes and the ears on the WNBA. But every time I hear it, all I hear about is Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese. When one of, if Caitlin Clark is hit, I hear about that. If Angel Reese said something, oh, I hear about how she's a, how she's a villain and she's not that important. But you, everybody's saying we're talking about it more, but the only real people we're talking about are the two people who are rookies and who are doing their best to keep up. And in my opinion, Angel Reese is having a little bit more success. Only from the standpoint, she's a rebounder. That's who she is. Yeah, she scores points when she can, 
But her bread and butter is rebounding. And she's top 10 as a rookie. Caitlin, I believe, I was looking today, I want to say it was top 15 in scoring, and that's what she's known for. And when you look at her scoring average, her scoring average right now is probably about 14, not 14, uh, about 11 to 12 points beneath the highest score in the league. So she's not killing the game yet. But everybody's waiting to see those games where she drains it from the three-point line. And, and that's cool. I'm not even mad at it. As, as far as the women are concerned, I'm sure every single woman in the WNBA is happy that people are paying attention. And I'm sure the trickle-down effect is in effect. But what I'd appreciate just from my perspective. I'd appreciate if we can stop having conversations about hate. And if you want to enjoy the game, go enjoy the game. But it seems we're only talking about it when Caitlin gets hurt or Caitlin gets abused. Truth is, Angel Reese got clothesline. I didn't see no articles about that. So let's stop pretending that everybody's hating on Caitlin. And if we're going to watch these games, if we're going to talk about the WNBA, can we at least hear the names of some of the best players in the league right now? Because it's not Caitlin. It's not Angel Reese. They might be in two, three years, but they aren't right now. So let's get it together. If y'all gonna have a conversation, have a conversation about the entire league. Because the league is bigger than two people. Even if one of those people is driving it. It's still bigger than her. And on that note, I'm gonna be period. And I'm out.